Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry we're late. I was doing things. Uh, there may be some audio weirdness today, so if the levels are strange or whatever, just let me know. I got some serious cleanup to do. Levels, levels. Thank you, Steve, for the tier one sub. Jason's here. Hi. We had a great conversation before we got started. It was, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? How about now? Levels, levels. How about now? Lots of shit. Okay, so I have a new microphone. As you yes. can see. This is the Elgato Wave 3. What? Yep. And I've been I've been influenced, Jason. Uh-oh. That's the most dangerous thing you can that can happen to somebody on the internet. Yeah, I've been uh, seeing a bunch of streamers that I like and lots of people using this. I tell you the the one reason that I wanted to buy it. This on the top is a capacitive mute switch. Oh, so there's absolutely no sound. Mm -hmm. Keep it like that. It's Unmuted. Oh, yeah. oh. All right, that's really nice. And I also got the low profile boom arm that they make. So you kind of see it here, right? Instead of coming up and over, it's basically low to the desk. I'm gonna take a picture yeah. of it. So I use, uh, when I'm traveling, I'm using the Shure, uh, what's it called? Now I can't remember, I'm blanking Shure on it. Shure SM7, it's, it's not it's the, the new M7 or something? Yeah, and, and it's uh, it also has capacitive controls, and while I miss my super clicky awesome um, rolls uh, mute switch, yep. It is, there is something to be said for a, a completely silent um, mute switch. Yeah, it's completely silent. You just tap the top. And if you have the shock mount, because, so they do like a whole thing, right? You can buy from them the arm, the microphone, the shock mount, and the pop filter. It all comes from, oh God, you buy like a whole set. Um, and so like now, like I could just tap it. It doesn't make any noise. And there's an indicator on the front. And the, on the front too, I have uh, a wheel to, to adjust my volume levels, but it can adjust my microphone level, my uh, headphone level, and the mix between what I hear of me and you, all on the microphone oh, nice. itself. And they actually yep. now have built an XLR, um, what would you call it? Uh, preamp, like a, an interface. Yeah. Just with all of these features, so you can use your own microphone. So it has the so, capacitive mute. Uh, uh, David Sparks has that. He bought the the interface. Interesting. I um yeah. It's the uh, by the way, mine is the MB7 that I travel with. This is the SM7B. It's good. I like it a lot. Um, it sounds like my SM7B, but it doesn't have a USB interface and all that. And all those controls are on it. It's super small, so the controls are all on the capacitive area, and you have to toggle between them. Yeah. But it does mean you have complete control, touch control over all your audio, which yep. there's something to be said for that. I can't even see my audio interface. It's under my desk, but I do I do have my uh, my rolls switch. Yeah, I, I have the, the roll switch next to the pre in the, in the recording. Oh yeah, look, obviously the uh, pennant. Yeah. So I can be, yeah. there's the winner's pennant. Other side, there it is, yeah. winner's pennant. Mirrors, how do they work? Yeah. So basically one of the reasons I wanted to do this is I was increasingly frustrated with the audio of the streams because I was using this headset, which I really like, but if I didn't have it set right, you'd hear me breathing, and I really didn't like that. <laughs> and also yeah. now, I can take this thing and angle it down, in theory. I need to work out exactly how to do that. Like I could bring it down here, and then type in it. This is all very new, needs to still be set up properly, but. Well, and I like that this microphone is it's sensitive enough. I can have it off to the side. I don't have to have it right in front of my face because right I don't. Face. I don't sure. want that for a. For video, yeah. For, for makes video, because this, this is this is how I would record. Yeah. I if know. I was recording a podcast, it would be like this. This is a great video. What are you talking about? Yeah. That looks. This looks so good right now. Because plus, I have. <laughs> I have some plans for video stuff. Ooh. It this year and. 
I wanted to upgrade the system a little bit. I haven't actually, I don't actually know how this sounds. You said it sounded pretty good though, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to do yeah, some Yeah, you will there. see how you, you're going to have to judge it yeah. and see if it's if it's good enough. But I think <clears throat> the standards are different for video than podcasting, too. They so are. It's fine. They are. So i got to fiddle with this a little bit more, like just to kind of get it the exact way that I want. But I think this is going to be a better overall setup for what I'm doing here. I might get some different headphones, too. These might be a bit much. Yeah, so Ian said in the chat exactly kind of what I thought, which is like... You sound good, the better. You sound better when you're closer, right? But the pickup distance is good. Plus, I can adjust the gain anyway. It's like I'm only on three right now. Like I can turn it up. Now it's like nearly at the maximum. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, now you like an echo though. Yeah, and yeah, much you more echo that, that way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, today we are here. Primarily for for this thing, we're gonna fill it with packing materials, Jason. Oh, great! <laughs> You're gonna stuff it full of stuff. Mm -hmm. I have three right, things I'm gonna today. Do also, also, I'm gonna uphold my end of the bargain for um for Operation Keyboard, uh, Keyboard Club, mm -hmm. and I've got my uh, I've got some boxes here that I've received oh, that nice. are part of my part of this process. So. Do you want to Get do the unboxing that. first? I'll make your screen bigger here. Oh, sure. Let's see what you got. All right. So I've got from Keychron. It's going to be great, me trying to open a box. I've got oh, a man. custom. Ooh. Do this. Wrong way. There it is. Yep. Six colors. You can sort of see oh, it. Oh, that's nice. That's my badge. That looks real great. It's my six colors badge. That's looking good. What else do I have? What is that? And then this is what you kind of convinced me to buy, and Stephen Hackett taught me the important lesson of what not to do. Oh, weird. They've changed the boxes. Yeah, these are the drop. Their boxes are terrible. All, key, all key cap boxes are bad, to be honest. Good. Individual strips of bubble wrap. That Love seems it. very funny to me, but also an incredible amount of work to lay individual bubble wrap things. Yeah, no kidding. So anyway, I've got this whole I've got this whole key set. Great. The uh, w including all the extended keys. So I ordered the full thing because I saw don't let don't let Stephen Hackett's <laughs> failure happen don't, to you. Don't be a Stephen. That's don't be saying. a Stephen. Yeah. So it's the classic app. Oh look, there's no bubble wrap up here in this top row. It's destroyed. No one cares Shameful. about the number row. And that one, it's all bent. Anyway, it's a uh, it's old style Apple um, mm -hmm. little italic keys. It's this layout, you know. It's the yes. the beep drop layout. Anyway, so that's gonna go on this keyboard. Yeah, because this is my these yeah, are mine. Yeah. The keycaps when we're are mine. done. Exactly, you're gonna keep those. Yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the the whole. Uh, I'm leaning into the theme. So I'm gonna go to the whole uh, through the whole thing. I think it's. So yeah, that's be... my that's my show and tell. I I have pr uh, prepared the way, as uh -huh. they say. As they say, on this side, for what is to come. Great. So I wanna. Um, we're gonna go through again what my issues are with this keyboard in its current state. So I'll pause the music for a minute, and we're gonna do a little bit of a sound test here, with the new with the new microphone. You hear that? Okay. Right. So. My issue yep. is I feel like when you really go, f it's too pingy. All right, let me turn it up. This row, I hate this. There oh, is a problem. It's like a jingle jangle yep. row there. Clink, 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 clink. Like it's glass or something. There is an issue with bad. this keycap set, though, which happens here on the most of the time it's okay but every now and then hear that oh yeah yeah the problem that with that is the edges of the keys sometimes hit the edges of the case because the case is rounded the keys are sharp edged now right the way that you would deal with that if you wanted to would be for some of those keycaps to just 
file them down a little bit. Yeah, but that, file them that's going to be a thing that you might not have a problem with. I, I'm, I can't really do much of that because I would recommend filing the keys before the case. But the things like yep. this, all this resonance, yeah, that's what we're going to try and get rid of today. Okay. Because I've seen some modifications that people have done that vastly improve the sound of this keyboard. The funny thing is, that, I mean, I've never done any of these kinds of mods before. Like people do these kinds of mods for keys, uh, for keyboards all the time. Um, and I've never done any. And the funny thing is, is it includes just a bunch of like really weird things. So this is like, I don't remember what it's called now. Polyfill? This is what yeah. goes inside of teddy bears. Yeah. Right? And then we've got masking tape. And this mammoth bag, all of this stuff is like way more than, than I need, obviously, for this. like an ASMR dream right now. It's just like foam, packing foam, really thin packing foam. Mm -hmm. We even have fragile stickers too, which is fun, I guess. And so basically I'm following a method by a couple of stream, by a couple of streamer YouTubers. Uh, it's a combo of Alex Otos and Bad Seed Tech's video. If you search for, like for people watching, if they want to try these out themselves later on, if you go on YouTube and search Bad Seed Tech Keychrom Mod, you'll find the video. So, the this could get weird, but we're gonna, I think what I will wanna try and do is maybe, I wonder if we should try one at a time and see how you like it. I think the first one we're gonna do is called the Tape Mod, because I've never done the Tape Mod before. People seem to really dig that. Now I need okay. to remember how to open this thing. I need my tools. And since we started this one, hasn't Keychron actually come out with a, an entirely new, or not entirely new, but a revision of this same yeah. keyboard? They have. So they brought out a keyboard called the uh, Q2, which is a 65%. But the Q2 had a bunch of modifications made for the sound to, to do what I'm doing basically. And they put these little ga gasket strips, like these little rubber strips in between areas of the case. So the case wasn't hitting against each other anymore, which is I think where the problem is. And they have said that they're going to be updating the Q1, Q1 to have the same things, but obviously there's nothing we can do about that. We have what we have. But, which is cool. I'm pleased that they did it because this is a really good, this is a really good, fun, excellent value keyboard. But it's just missing that that one part, which is the sound. And if they are able to fix that, then I'm sorry, I'm not really. I'm, I apologize to chat. I'm not really paying attention to chat today because I have a real chat. And it's Jason. Ha, ha, ha. He's not alone. No. With his thoughts in his chat room. Thank you. Well, they added the knob version is out now too. Yeah. They never... They I, I, My understanding is they said that they were going to make the knob available to buy for the Q1 later on. And I don't know if they've done that. Because the knob on the Q2 is sorted on to the board. Which, you know, I could do that, but... Oh, okay. They also released the specs to solder one on to a pre... Pre-knob version. Yeah, okay. I so, yeah, I mean, so it's like technically, yes, they have made it available. But for a lot of people, that that would be a, a tricky thing to do. Yes. Who would buy Some this keyboard. Some of us keyboard. have a no soldering policy. And I think the people that would buy this keyboard, specifically, probably don't have that stuff available to them or the experience. Because this is a very much a starter keyboard, right? I have to say, the <clears throat> I love the idea of like the knob on the keyboard, but I will tell you, I have been using, I'm gonna switch my camera here. Oh, nice. I've been using this, which is the loop deck. Loop deck, that's the John Voorhees special. The, the, 
Yeah, I have complicated one. thoughts about the loop deck and I'm still working on it, but this thing is all knobs. It's got six push button Love knobs. Time. Plus, what is this? Eight other push buttons plus a touchscreen area with uh and it doesn't push down like on a stream deck but it's a touchscreen with haptics and then two side panels with like little minor things my point is what i discovered is that programming knobs is complicated <laughs> Have and you um, had any luck getting that to do anything with logic? No. Yeah. No, the only... So my problem with the Loop Deck is it feels like if you're not using one of their plugins or whatever they call them, that's a set that somebody has developed that are using their API to use that hardware and have it be beautiful and, and complicated and, and, like, and built specifically for this lets you control Final Cut Pro or this lets you control uh, Streamlabs. Mm -hmm. If you don't take advantage of that stuff it's not that useful yeah <laughs> um and like programming the knobs to do things like i i had this vision of like well if i could fire off an apple script that can or a python script or whatever but probably an apple script to do like system control stuff and it can tell me i just turn the knob this way or that way or whatever i could build my own little sort of knob control for that thing mm -hmm. nope <laughs> Just can't do it. So yeah, I've I'm a little. My point is, I think maybe the knob thing is is um, overhyped a little. I've tried to like a couple of products in the past. Um, hold on, I'm just having a little bit of a struggle bus over here. Getting this, it's not coming out here. I guess I also, it. I'll, I'll while you're doing that, I'll say that uh, on Mac OS at least the workarounds they do to use knob control for things that are built into things like the loop deck, like volume, uh, turns out that, you know, they're, they're only connected to the same Apple stuff as any uh, scripting would be. They, yep. they, they're tying into scripting interfaces and it leads to funny things. Like if I'm air playing music and I try to adjust the volume using the knob, it just doesn't work because <laughs> huh. that doesn't work in the scripting interface either. It's a totally different thing, to, a pathway to change airplay volume than to play, change the music app volume. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were going through it before. And the right? loop deck doesn't know about it, so it's, yeah. Yeah, I've tried, because I've tried a few different things, even like the keyboard knobs and stuff, because what I really want is um, a, a ro rotary dial that can move a logic project left and right, you know? So yeah. I can just score, the, and it just doesn't work. And there's no keyboard shortcut for it either. The only keyboard shortcut will just jump it chunks ahead, and that's no good. Yeah, te yeah, exactly. That was when when I was uh, experimenting with the loop deck and Logic. It was that where you could go yeah. like a uh, uh, frame or ten frames per, yeah. or in Final Cut the same thing. And it's just it's not it's not good enough. All right. It's so what we're enough. gonna do is we're gonna take the masking tape. We're gonna apply it to this to the back of the PCB. I don't know exactly why this makes stuff sound better, but it but it does. It's it's just one of those things where like a lot of the streamers that I watch were like, no way is that going to improve the sound of the keyboard, but it does. And I have no doubt that somebody in the chat right now is going to tell us why. Because well, it's dampening vibrations, right? I mean, fundamentally, I it's spreading those vibrations over this wider area, which is the surface of the tape. I just made that up, but I think it might be right. Well, I'm going to go with that. Right, because in the end, a lot of the sound dampening stuff is about spreading out or um, reducing vibration, because mm -hmm. the vibration is what turns into noise, because that's all noise is. The thing is that's like kind of funny is that you know like some people do make these modifications to, to really expensive keyboards, and like you can do your own thing, like if you're happy with it, go for it. But there is something kind of funny to like spending, I don't know, like $400 on something and then putting masking tape on the back of it. Mm -hmm. That's very impressive. Why? Oh masking. my God. So you, you've come across this before, Jason. You've been on the stream. Steve has just uh, uh, redeemed a desk mat change. So I now need to change my desk mat, which is going to take a little bit. I have to be very careful with all of the pieces that I've removed of your keyboard here. Let me think, where can I put them so that I won't get lost? I have that tray, but it's full of stuff. I don't want to get... Let me just get rid of these lost screws. And I'll put it in there. 
I was hoping to be the person to uh, get the milestone sea lion honk, but uh, you I, it. I had to. I had to. I had to go do something else. So. It every, was like you're gonna have to wait 40 minutes for this thing to time out, and I was like, I, I can't. And also, everyone was wanting to be quick on the draw. On that oh one. yeah, oh yeah, that was gonna be quite a competition. I believe, if memory serves, it's instantiate this that got it. Yep. That was good stuff. I have my my desk is in such a mess today. I'm thinking I'm just gonna come to the studio tomorrow. And just try and tidy the studio up a little bit because it's a real mess in here right now. Just got like boxes and packing materials all over the place, including like I have like a wooden crate that I have to get rid of, which a filing cabinet came on. It is the official Cortex brand filing cabinet. Not produced by Cortex brand, but no. to contain all of Just Cortex all of brand's Cortex material. Cortex. It has like samples and stuff in it. All right. Go. Oh, Luke, thank you for the gifted sub. Is is my audio cutting out? Someone's saying my audio is cutting out. Let me know if my audio is cutting out. I, I'm hearing you fine Yeah. through Discord, other than when occasionally you move so far. Your gain's a little low, and so when you move away from your microphone, sometimes I think it auto drops you out. I think especially Discord. Yeah, I've just got to get used to the microphone, like how yeah. close should I have it and stuff. I mean, Discord's going to be cutting it out for you. Because it does all the bits like... Processing. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to where we were. Oh, we got a honk, Jason. This is the first honk on the new microphone. That's honk 101, I think. As in, I tried to buy a honk earlier, but it was not in stock. It was muted? Oh, interesting. Okay. Huh. I think this microphone's trying to do like some suppression stuff. That's so, oh no, it's because I haven't set up the sound on the new. Hold on, hold on. Oh, on that, on the honk view. Yeah. Oh. Copy. Oh. I'm now going to all of my various uh and paste. Uh, uh, uh the stream can't see it, but I can see it. That was some very impressive uh mouse work there, Mike. Did it did it work? Did they hear it? I don't know if they heard it. I think they did. That was an Arctic Harbor seal hunt. I'm very excited because there is a keycap set based on seals coming out and I feel like I need to buy it. This masking tape is really annoying to get off the roll. It keeps doing that thing where it like it breaks a little bit. So I'm going to do it very carefully. how many layers of tape to do. I feel like I'm gonna do two layers.
When is the Apple results? It's soon, right? Apple results I think it's is like... two weeks. It's the 27th. Oh, yeah, because we're recording on my birthday, and I get to talk about Apple results on my birthday. Oh, right. Yeah, that's nice. Which is actually a present to me because I love talking about it. I know you love it. I'm just a big, big financial boy. Everyone knows that about me. Mike loves uh, numbers. I love Wall Street. Mm hmm. Art. I listened to uh, the most recent downstream. Really good. Oh, Happy good. that you're back. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be back. I'm making, I've made a little, uh, actually I've made a little New Year's resolution for myself, believe it or not. Oh yeah? Yeah. Even though I am so against New Year's resolutions, just mm -hmm. ideologically. But this one didn't really fit in a theme, so it's like whatever. Which is, I want to make sure I'm doing a better job of listening to my friends' podcasts than I have done oh. in the past year or two. So I let a lot of shows, I've just been doing a lot of binging of, of like, you know, I'm still going through stuff like Talking Sopranos or whatever, but something I want to do this year, I want to, I want to do a better job of listening to my friends' shows. Because I like I them more, you know? I was talking to a, it, it is, it's fun to listen to your friends. Like, I, I, this is how distorted it is when you are a podcaster and you know podcasters is my podcast listening with the exception of you know there are a few shows like the flop house that that are not this way but essentially podcasting has become a way for me to listen to my friends talking to each other okay <laughs> which is a little bit weird but uh but it's nice i was talking to a friend of ours yesterday who will remain nameless and i we were talking about something that had come up on upgrade and i said to this person I don't know if you heard Upgrade this week, because I don't want to presume that people listen or yeah. they listen quickly. Yeah. But I also didn't want to say, we talked about this thing and have them say, oh, yes, I know. I listen to Yeah. Um, so I said to this person, I don't know if you listen to Upgrade this week. And their response was, oh, I, I don't have time to listen to podcasts anymore. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I thought, all right, well, you're, you're a busy person and you got other things to do. It's fine. I wonder who that it's a person was. who's a longtime podcast listener, but I think this person has uh, just uh, gotten real, real busy. Huh. And I, uh, and you know, also all of our lives have, have changed in some ways. I went yep. through a period. What was it? We maybe it was Thanksgiving where we were driving a lot, and it was like, oh my god, podcasts. I remember these. Funnily enough, talk, referencing Talking Sopranos in uh, mob culture, if you say a friend of ours, it means that they're in the mob. Ah, uh, yes. And That's if you what just say a friend of mine, they're not, but they're actually your friend. Ah. That's what I learned. I learned all these things. Nice. But yeah, I just That's felt like... Well, this was a friend of ours. I basically... <laughs> I went through a thing where I wanted to listen to stuff that was different to what I made. Like, that was... I, I kind of went right. through this trend during the pandemic where I was kind of just like... I wanted a bit more escapism in my podcast listening. But then I kind of realized that I wasn't listening to my friends anymore, and that bummed me out. All right, so we've got some masking tape on here now. Okay. So we're all taped up. This is, we've mummified the keyboard. I think we're just gonna do all of them and see how it goes. We're just gonna try them all. Now, I think what I need to do is remove this what is that? This is just some like foam. Foam pads? Yeah. You know my wife uh, can't touch foam? She freaks her out? Yeah. Interesting. Is there anything else? I don't else? like aluminum foil, but she really, really doesn't like foam. This isn't like a... If it's aluminum, you just don't like to touch it, but... Lauren, well, like, like, freaks we have out. Some stuff, that when there's, like, leftover pizza, you wrap it in aluminum foil, and we have come to an understanding that she's going to do that because I don't want to touch the aluminum yeah. foil. It makes it creeps me out, and the crinkling sound really creeps me out, creeps me out. But I also know that, like, we get Christmas every year. People send us pears, Harry and David pears, and they come wrapped in a it's, a... it's a box with a bunch of pears in it, but the pears are wrapped in foam inserts. And that's also now... Um, 
In fact, this actually happened over Christmas where she said, I'm not getting in that box. And I said, oh, no, go ahead. She said, what do you mean? I said, oh, I took the foam out. And she's like, oh, what a good husband. I know that you don't want the foam. I secretly remove the foam whenever I can. So we're putting a There's cloud. Got some, got some yak hair in there now, Mike. Now, the only thing, because I was thinking, oh, this will be fine. But you will need to take this keyboard apart to put your badge in it. I think. Ah. Uh, so just be aware of what I'm doing here. That the polyfill will have yeah. to be. Uh... I don't really. Again, I don't really know how much oh, to put in here. So you have to take it from the underside in order to to screw the badge on on, on the other yeah, side. Yeah, the badge screws onto the case. So you just have to. T but you have to basically take the keyboard apart the to get to the case, and then the badge screws in here like this. Right. That. Okay. Yeah. I wish Got there it. was a way to not do that, but you you, you pop it in like that. So this is this for now. I've heard that some of it sticks out and you have to kind of just like tend to that. Uh, hold on one second. I guess so Nurse Wander and I will say that um, Lauren absolutely, well, I don't know if she does remove the foil from all the pairs, but the last pair left is still in our fridge and it's, uh, it's the foil wrapped one. But I mean, I really wanted a pair, I would take it off. I, I, it, it's unpleasant, I prefer not to do it, but it's not like I can't. She will not touch me. So if that pair was wrapped in foam, it would just sit there forever. Maybe is maybe when she when she wants um, to keep the pairs for herself, she wraps them in the foil so you can't get them. She can wrap anything in the foil, and I, I would it would have to be really enticing for me to go in there, especially if I didn't know what it was and it was just wrapped in foil. I, it's like I don't know what that is. <laughs> Forget it. Never gonna know. It. Never gonna happen. And then this thing. I think the way you kind of fold it up like this. Yeah. Because basically one of the other things that this is all doing is just adding compression, which stops right. the vibration. Right. I mean, depending on the material, I think it will. It can also make everything contact everything else <laughs> and so it could increase the vibration but I don't think that's what it's doing. Can you imagine if I do all of this and it just sounds like so much worse in a brand new way? Yeah, or if That'd it like sounds like the screams of teddy bears. This is what we're going to attempt here. Put some tape on this thing. Yeah, as Bill says in the chat, it's very easy to keep secrets from Jason. Just, Just wrap them in, in aluminum foil. Absolutely. This is—I don't know how exactly I will turn. I will use take, this for bad, but take your secret, wrap it in aluminum foil. Well, I mean, all I need, like I said, I can I can override it, but I'd rather not. You just don't want to. We're doing some real arts and crafts today. Yeah, that's good. I should have brought like uh, stuff to make a lanyard. <laughs> of the things you do at camp. I'm gonna get my uh, my keyboard modding badge today. You know, put like the scouts badge, mm -hmm. patch, or whatever they're called. I was gonna take uh, the triple J out of my keyboard, and and uh, but then I realized there's only one J. That'd be good. You just a keyboard of all J's. All J's. Sure, that'd be great. All J's all the time. Well, I hope Keychron enjoys this badge thing because that costs way more money. To, but I did it for the stream. It's gonna be good. It will look good too, though. Yes, it's it funny. Good. Speaking of all J's all the time, uh, sometimes I poke around on the iTunes reviews, especially like recently because we've been messing around with them on Connected. Right. And someone after the Triple J episode was like. I really love John on the show. I wished Mike would leave and John would replace him. <laughs> I was just like, oh man. Wow. <laughs> it's a four star review or something. Hold on, let me find it. I want to wow. read it. It was very funny That's to rough. me. It doesn't bother me anymore because I've, I've been dealing with these kinds of things for years. Uh, sure. Where is it? Are podcast reviews universal or are they still... I country. use an app that somebody that a listener made called My yeah. Reviews. Uh, it's called, and and I get them. I can view them from everywhere around the world that way. 
Because otherwise, yeah, yeah like, I would only see UK reviews. Because that's like Comet Cast used to do that, right? Yeah. So, two star review. Oh, okay. Well, that makes much sense. Yeah. Fun. This episode with John made me wish we could have a podcast of John, Stephen, and Federico instead. He spelled Stephen wrong. My complaints all the time. There it is. My complaints all the time and talks over the other hosts, always interrupting people to talk about his own opinions instead of actually listening to his co-hosts. I do talk over people. I, I know this is a thing. We have this problem. The two of us have this problem. And it is the podcast host's problem, I think. When you are like a host of a show, you jump in more because you're trying to move the conversation, right? Which is why like the editing of our show can be tricky sometimes because it's most of it is just me or you talking over the other one <laughs> because as well it's like i tell you what it is we've spoken about this before when you're the editor you know whatever was the best thing said will be the thing that comes out at the end right right so i i, I have a bad habit from it but uh yeah i just think it's funny all right so we've stuffed this nice. thing full of crap all right this too much stuff because now i this, this, this. <laughs> I <laughs> immediately could see that it was too much stuff. Too much stuff. So we're going to reduce the amount of this. Because I could just tell immediately that I was going to have to break the keyboard to uh, try and fit it in there. It's always the problem like the risk that you take with doing an episode like the Triple J episode or like whenever you have a guest host you always run the risk of somebody saying I prefer this with the guest host oh yeah I've had it on up we've had it with Upgrade a bunch of times Upgrade but, uh, absolutely they're like why doesn't Jason just have John Syracuse on every week yeah. and I was like well I mean I, I can think of a few reasons why yeah <laughs> or Merlin same yeah, thing Merlin. right yeah and, and also, it's unfair, right? Because they are get special guests, mm -hmm. and they get it is a different dynamic. And it's a, it's. A, I will say when we did the Triple J episode, um, we we wanted to we wanted to make fun of the format in a way that showed that we listened to the show. That uh, yes, but that, also yep. we wanted to do it. We didn't want to disrespect the listeners by doing some crummy joke show we yep. wanted to do a real show i said that this was to James. also a joke i think the real great thing about that show is it it literally sounded like an episode of the podcast the three of you make right. and to make that work with the first time you've ever done it was yeah my hat was off to the work that you guys did to make that because i don't know how you did it honestly because that is an incredibly hard thing to find the chemistry and i know we're all friends but it doesn't mean that it's going to work. But it, it just, to me, as a listener, felt like I was sitting in on episode 250 of the Triple J version of Connected. <laughs> Which is honestly well, was kind of a masterstroke from, from you guys that you were able to pull that off. The challenge is so hard to do. Especially with James, is James has gotten better at this, but James is very uncomfortable being on podcasts and he likes to prepare. And we yeah. did, we did a lot of preparation for the triple J. We did, that took so much, um, that took a lot of time. Yeah, I could <laughs> tell that was a lot of work that went into that. But, but the one downside of that is sometimes I felt as we were doing it, that, that there was a little too much reading instead of talking, but yeah, it, it was, it was all good. I mean, and, and we were all, I think, I think it loosened up as we went too. Yeah, it did. I mean, this is, but, I mean, yeah, it was fun. I make fun of James uh, for this exact thing, mm -hmm. but he's gotten so much better at it than. Oh yeah, when we first had him on Clockwise, I mean, literally, he wrote all his answers out and then just. Do you read remember them out on the show? when we did the live one at all, and he just he had like he just read from scripts. his notebook or yeah. whatever? Yeah. Yeah, he's he yeah he's gotten better at that now, but he's just very concerned about. People not everybody can not everyone can, can or, just... or wants. To be well, extemporaneous. He can be. That's the thing. He absolutely can be. But it, he just sometimes doesn't trust himself, which I understand. Yep. I'm doing terrible things to this keyboard. Just to yeah, of, really. On a fundamental level. But I love that I've built the confidence in myself that, like, all right, I'm just going to take this little door board off and just see what happens. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. 
It is. So you're basically... Oh, you've had to move it in order to fit it under... It was just... It, it, otherwise, I needed to take the whole thing apart again. Like, right. take all the keycaps off, all the switches out, and I just couldn't be bothered to do that. So I've no. taken it the easy way. I don't know why they have... Why it kind of overhangs a little bit. I got it. This keyboard is built for, like... Somebody who wants to be a keyboard enthusiast but just wants to get started with something like right. that's that's what this is because like it's a it, gateway. Key, it's a key, gateway. Well, keyboard. this is this was their intelligent thing, right? So Keychron has been doing these keyboards for a while now, and they filled this niche of like you want a mechanical keyboard, um, but you're not gonna like what I do, which is yep. buy them and put keycaps on yep. them. But that's about it. And then they're like, okay, what's the next kind of logical step that we could take that will also have sort of a broader audience? And it's this, and I think that's pretty smart. I'm really happy that they've done it because they've given an option that's available in stock. And that just doesn't exist yeah. in the keyboard hobby. Exactly. Right, and, and it's not, you know, it, it is the gateway and you may stop there or you may continue down that path, but it gives people kind of an in that they might not have otherwise had. And I think that's great. Maybe for me too, who knows? I think it is going to do that for a lot of people. All right, now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. The screams of teddy bears. Woo! Okay. Yeah, I can feel there's a lot of compression going on here, and there's a, just a little bit of a beard poking through. Let me tuck him in there. No, you put some in. beard oil on that. Go in there. Typical Mike keyboard has a beard. Yep. Okay, be careful about the way I do this. Look at those loose keycaps on your desk there. These? Very on brand, yeah. These are yours. I had to take those off to, to get it out. It's nice, I like it. Well, they're not yours, they're mine, but you know what I mean. Yeah, but I get it. So what material, what do I use? Do I use like sandpaper or something to file down the edges to, so that they don't stick? I reckon you could probably try that. You know, just like a little bit at a time. They'll find, yeah. Because you might right. be able to do just enough that it's, you know, maybe it reduces it like by 50% and then it's just going to be a couple of times every now and again. Right. Oh, we've made the big time, Jason. We just had a buy followers, primes, and viewers spam message. You know? Is that what was deleted by a moderator? That's yeah. nice. But it still shows on the screen. Because... That's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. It shows up because... Uh... Streamlabs is pulling it in. That's hilarious. Make money fast. <laughs> Have you gotten a lot more spam lately? I've gotten a lot more spam lately. It's, it's all in my Gmail spam folder. Gmail is handling it. Oh, but I guess so. Much. I used to get a handful a day, and now I now it's like forty a day. I get so much spam email. I don't know if it's increased. <laughs> it's spam season. I've had the same email address since the nineties. Yeah. So I get a lot of spam. My iCloud email is where most of the spam goes to. Oh, I should tell you uh, a funny story. Yep. I discovered a, I was on a, a mailing list for, some, for something and it was for this name that is not my name. So it was to me, but it was to Jason something else starting with S. Mm -hmm. And I searched and over the last like 10 years, I've gotten like eight me emails for this. Oh, this is like uh, the John Syracuse thing, right? Where like he yeah, always well, this posts is... these emails that he gets for that meant for other people. Yeah, it, it might be that, but what it, what it is is I think some there was some mix up in a in a mailing a spam mailing list yeah. like ten years ago, and occasionally that list surfaces. It's just the same way that the lady who owned the house that we live in before us, uh, we would occasionally get a piece of a uh, piece of mail for her, and you know she died in 1998, and right. yet we still and like those are bad bad mailing lists, but people spammers will still use them and and so what i did is i created a gmail filter that now just looks for that word that that wrong last name and trashes it yeah because it's 100 percent spam but it was a very funny moment where i'm like why do i keep seeing this and it turns out yeah there's a handful of messages over the last five or ten years so it's not going to be high volume but somebody out there still thinks that that uh i'm a different jason well that does sound better All right, so let's see how this sounds, shall we? 
Down you go, microphone. Oh! No, I, I didn't even hear that. It's so much better. All right, hold on. Yeah, you... Hold on, Discord's messing it up for you. Hold is, on. Is Discord pr saving saving? Uh, Discord saving you. Saving me from hearing your hearing. But your Jason, typing? I've made this keyboard sound god tier for you. This is so good. Hold on, voice and video. Do not determine. No, not that one. Where's the thing? Where's the setting? What, noise suppression. That's off. N noise reduction. Let's try it with that. You hear it yet? Oh yeah, I hear it now. I cannot believe the difference that has made. That is amazing. These are the, by the way, um, who is that? Uh, Wonky Pinky. It's uh, the Drop Plus Beep um, MT3 key layout that's the inspired by uh, classic Apple keyboards. And what are the switches? Uh, TKC Kiwi switches. Hand lubricated by my curly. Yep. Wow, I cannot believe how different that sounds. Like, I understand why, right? But it's because it's muffling it, but it really is, that's a massive difference. Like, this is kind of like a sound that I would be happy to use this. Like, if I built a keyboard like this one, it's like, like oh yeah, I would use this. Where the previous one, like before I did this, I, I hated how it sounded. Yeah, there's no, before, that was making like a metallic noise. So now, ah, uh, you see what, now it hits the side, but it doesn't make the pinging sound. Interesting. It doesn't make a bad sound. You can kind of hear that it's scraping, but over time, that's gonna wear down on its own, right? So you might want to do a little bit to it, but. Right. I wonder too, if, if the, the pressure that's pushing up on it means that it's, it's sitting a little higher. Maybe, yeah. This is much better. Oh, but look, we've got some, some little flyaways there to take care of. <laughs> Need to shave. Yeah. So some of this stuff you will have to do when you switch your badge over. But I don't think it'll be too difficult. You just kind of just got to keep everything in place. When you do do that though, you do have to, I would recommend that you remove all the keycaps and switches. Yeah. To do that. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to have to do things like remove that little daughter ball, which I don't recommend. And plus, you want to, I reckon you don't, ju you just want to take the top off. You know what, actually, you might not need to do too much. If you just, because you really, you've got to, what I would recommend is you unscrew it all, flip it over, uh -huh. and just take the top off. That way you actually wouldn't need to remove the keycaps. Right, because all I'm doing is unscrewing the... You unscrew all of this, badge. these, yeah, and then, and then lift the top just off, lift the top and then off. flip the top over and unscrew the badge. Yeah, the badge. but then the only issue is you have to, um, you just got to keep the compression. So like what right. I did was, you know, you just you have to kind of squeeze it down, put these in halfway, sure. and then in the corners, and then you can kind of just go around and do it. I'm really happy with how this has come out, and I, I now feel comfortable sending this to you. Because before I was like, this isn't good enough. But now, this feels good enough. 
Oh, yeah, you want to? Okay, hold on. Packing materials. You just stuff to stuff to keyboard full of packing materials. How about that? It's totally worked though. Uh, someone's asking to see an inside of a keyboard that I have, because I had a keyboard that I bought from a vendor who's a listener, and he laser engraved the relay logo on the inside of the keyboard for me as a surprise. So wow. I'm gonna find a picture of it because I don't really want to take the keyboard apart. Uh, yeah, so looks like that on the inside. Whoops. Huh. And then my ta like my tattoo. Oh yeah. It's really cool. He did it on the inside. Should I do a typing test, Jason? Like a speed thing? So you can laugh at me? Sure. And do you want to fire up the bot? And stuff, yeah. yeah. Can we do the... Can we do the competitive? Do, yep. Or not? We can do the competitive. How do we do that? Let's see. And take... Do the poll. We do the poll on my speed. But we can... Um, we can compete. I've forgotten how you do that, though. But I know you worked it out last time. I did. Current record is 82. Mm. Help us with how you start a monkey type competitive typing challenge. I thought you were. You sent it to us last time, didn't you? I did. I'm just not seeing where it is. There was a way to like share it with others and use the same one. Well, I mean, we can just do. Monkey type. If we use the same settings, it'll be close enough. Yeah. I'm on Windows 11 now, Jason. Oh, are you? Does it feel like the future? It's nicer looking. All right. What are your uh, monkey type settings? Um, wasn't it one of the labs features or something? That might be. So I just have 30 seconds is my. Back. So it's it's just time 30? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready to go when you are. Is the, is the predictions done, Ian? I'm going to drive Mike to new heights. Maybe. I don't think that's how it works for me. No. I've got to start by plugging the keyboard in. Okay. It's usually step one. Ooh, there's a new sound when I plug things in. That's exciting. All right. Oh, have I disappeared? I'm not on this. Okay, all right. Oh, hold on. I can get. I can bring you in. People got to see you, Jason. Copy. There he is. Are we going to allow restarts, now. Jason? What? You're not going to want to need to restart, are you? All right. 
I'd rather not. Yeah, okay, so we're just gonna do one and go the whole way. Don't like that. It's not how I usually work. Okay. But we can go, we do, do it your way. We're gonna, just gonna go the whole way through. Whatever you like. No, we'll do it. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. Oh my god, that was terrible. Woohoo! Alright, I got... Oh yeah. Oh, we're getting raided right now. Uh, thank you, Kujo26, for the raid during a terrible typing test. Jason... Yeah, with type people typing. Jason, I got 66 words per minute. Do you want to upset me? Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> 126. So, nearly double. Yeah. Well. There we there we are. Yeah. I uh, built a DNA keyboard, took it home. She sat down to test it. It was like, oh, 110 words per minute. I was like, all right. Well, uh -huh. Sounds nice when you type. Unbelievable. The speeds. Let's do another one. This is for fun. Okay. Ready? Oh, okay, hold hold on. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna switch back so people can admire my terrible, uh, weird typing uh, method. The camera's very funny because it's just mostly desk. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would. Have I know how you got it set up. up. It makes sense for how you have it set up for sure. I'm not because I was showing up here, but now I'm down here. Yeah. So okay. Uh, okay. I love it. So oh, no, Kujo, gotta... Kujo 26, the person that rated. I had a cursed typing typing test on a cursed keyboard. I think all of my keyboards are cursed, and that's why my speeds are so slow. All right, I'm ready when you are. All right. Three, two, one, go. Oh, God. Oh my god, it was even worse. Woohoo, better. 60. 140. Jeez. I'm not going to blame the keyboard, but I want to try with a different keyboard. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try with my other keyboard here, because I do find those keycaps a little trickier for me to type on. So, Kujo26, where is multiplayer monkey type? How do we get to it? That's the question. De there we go, we found uh, it. There, uh, there we found .com it. Slash Tribe. Okay. Connecting to tribe. Connection error. Well, that's not going to work. So. Okay. Well, <laughs> there I we tried. go. <laughs> Does not work. Tribe has been broken, apparently, for a while. Tribe is broken. So we just won't. Accounts. Well, we'll do it sometime. Um, we have done it before, and it did work. But yeah, let's not worry about it. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. All right, we're gonna okay. try. We're gonna try one more here. One more. Okay. Um, yeah, as Kirk is saying, I've made the keyboard I have made for you has been made to slow you down. Good. I need to consider things. Yeah. Watch me get like forty-five now. All right, you ready? Uh, yeah, sure. All right, hold on a second. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Oh, sorry, sorry. I restarted. I restarted by uh, instinct. I apologize. Okay. We'll start again. In three, two, one, go. 
Oh, 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 oh! Sorry, I did it again. Uh, last time, I'm not gonna do it anymore. You're just trying to wear me out now. Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to break you down. All right, you ready? Okay. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Yes! 81. Huh. Oh, good. So I was down to 128 there. Well, poor you. Uh, <laughs> what That's was my you record? Got in my head. You got in my head there. Yeah, I, got, I have a record. Oh, uh, DMC with the five gifted subs. Thank you, DMC. See, I, I, the, 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 I'm more used to these keyboards, the keys, I should say, they're lower, right? The, the, the sure. height of these ones, I like typing on them, but I am not as fast on them. Like, I find them enjoyable to use, but it's not what I'm used to. I did a typing test on a MacBook Air the other week. Yeah. Um, and I was surprised at how how good it was and how well I did because I, I, I am not used to that I mean it all came back to me but it was an M1 MacBook Air my M1 MacBook Air and it actually was I I got good speed on it I was impressed I didn't expect it yeah I I, I shared that result what I'll say with the MacBook now. Pro when I type on the MacBook Pro I'm not like oh this is terrible you know what I mean like I, I'm not like oh this is so bad like he, I keep and I didn't really feel that way about the old butterfly, but it was kind of that way. So people have been saying, Jason, that the keyboard that I built for you sounds like this other one that I built recently. Which is this one. I want all those people who are watching me type to diagnose my typing method because I just made it up over time while typing in computer programs in the 80s. So this is my J01 keyboard. This is the one that has the custom engraving on the inside. But the thing is, this this keyboard had these keys on, and it sound now it doesn't sound as much like it, but when it had these on, it sounded a little bit more like this. Huh. So when I started doing keycaps, I there's the, there was this decision about, like, some people wanted you to put like little um like orthodontist uh uh elastic band little rings on the underside of the keycap okay can you explain that to me sound dampening yeah it's just another sound damper it's to give it yeah. to make it make it uh, make it quiet quiet interesting because i have some switches the switches that i use when i'm recording so in my recording keyboard they have, hold on, I'll, I'll get some, I'll show you. Oh, I need something to open these with. So you'd be the brick asked if I touch type. Uh, assuming that means, do I look at the keys when I'm typing? The answer is no, I absolutely don't. But I'm also not using a traditional like method of of typing. I I, I when I was writing about um, iPad trackpads, I learned that I had a very weird um, trackpad finger placement thing that I never thought about. Right? It's completely internalized. Your part of your brain is determining where your fingers go and stuff. And it turned out I was doing some very when I videoed my hand doing mousing, I found that very weird things that um, broke some non-Apple trackpads, but the Apple trackpads handled it fine. Otherwise, I would have changed my behavior. And I imagine that my keyboarding is like that, too, that there are probably some very firm rules about how I do it, but they just evolved um, naturally, and I, I never learned how to type, so it just happened. It's the snail method. See if you yeah, can... I guess so. I should I should really, you know, take a bunch of videos and turn it into a whole system. So oh. These have these little silicone... See this tiny little piece of silicone here? It's hard to see. 
I'll take it out and show you. And basically this makes the switch quiet. So I can use these when I record. I cannot take it out. But yeah, there's like a tiny piece of silicone that just sits on the edge of the rail of the switch. This is the part that goes inside like this, which the keycap attaches to. And that silicone um, rail makes the switch much quieter. And so I can have... Sure. I, I actually have a version of this switch which doesn't have the silicone rail in it. And they feel very similar. And the one that doesn't have the rail and it sounds you know, it's got noise you can hear it right but this means that's that always I can... that's always the question with keyboards right is uh, i always find the sound of them to be part of what makes them so pleasant yes but i also understand that there are certain circumstances where having a loud keyboard is not great yep. like that's that's it for me right like but now i'm happy to get at least the feel right with, even if I don't have the sound. And when I'm typing, when we're recording, if I type something when we're recording, I can hear it, but the microphone can't hear it. It's not yeah. loud enough for that. Do you hear my keyboard? I can. I don't hear it when we're recording, but I catch Good. it when we're editing. When I'm editing. Yeah, so like, right. I see the little thing and I just pull it out. Yeah, because I don't have a... I used to have a podcasting keyboard, yep. and now I just try to try to not type loudly, but sometimes it makes noise. Yeah, the one that I have at home is similar. I turned the volume up a bit. I don't know if it's enough. Yeah, for a while I was just I have a uh, I had a Logitech yeah. Bluetooth keyboard that I would just put up on I I you know slide in the the keyboard tray and just put the Logitech keyboard on my desk while I'm doing a podcast and I yeah. can type there. At some point, I just gave up, and my son took it away to use on the, his uh, station. And what? What? That was the is that like one of their MX keys or something? It it's the it's their oh I forget what what model it is, but it was a it's a rechargeable multi Bluetooth device. It, it it's like the old MacBook Air keyboard back before the butterfly keyboard. It's it's modeled after that. But it's got the like you can switch from one to the other. Yeah. Time yeah, because Lauren uses it when she's working um, with uh, her laptop, working at home with her laptop on a stand, and then yep. Julian use, switches it over to the PS. I thought while we were hanging out, rather than end the stream, because do I'm done now, I figured yeah. I would take my keycaps off and get this thing ready to send to you. Oh yeah, I mean, I hear that uh, that reboxing videos are great on the internet. <laughs> it's the new trend. It is putting things away. People are into it. Farewell keycaps. These types of boards where they have the metal that goes around, it can be really hard to get some keycaps off. Right. So it's a bit of a skill. Uh oh. Sea lion honk. Oh. Jason does have the same keycaps. Yeah, I showed them. I'll be interested to see if you right use there. them in the long term. Yeah, I'm curious about that too. find out and I have I'll show it again I have my uh, custom Keychron bad because always be branding yeah it looks great this looks uh, so Jake uh, Jake does where do I get the key I just bought these on Amazon I just found a bunch of boxes on Amazon they're like they're nothing special they're just like food storage boxes food storage yeah like these things that I keep my switches in are just like pasta jars but they look it looks really good in there. Yeah. yeah I'm going to be really intrigued um, to see how you feel about the uh, 
the keycaps. You haven't put them on anything yet, right? You're waiting until this comes in. I'm waiting for that. So I think I am going to send you to um, the different plate options that I bought for this board. So it's got the polycarbonate in it, but if you ever get daring and want to change it out for brass or something like that, you can. Okay. And basically that will change the way that it feels, maybe how it sounds, but definitely how it feels. So the polycarbonate, what I've got in there right now, it's the softest typing feel, which I prefer. Um, and will actually also help make it sound better to my ears anyway. But if you use something like the brass, the it will change it. I, I, I don't know how noticeable this is unless you have a lot of experience. At first, I kind of couldn't really tell the difference between the plates. Um, but now if I use, say, a keyboard that has a brass plate in it, I can feel that it's stiffer because like, you're typing, like you just feel more of a stiffness. Hmm. But there is definitely a sound right, difference. Because there's less there's less give to the, the metal plate than there is yep. to the plastic plate. Yep. My favorite ones are, um, they're called FR4, and it's the same material that a PCB is made out of, which is really interesting. So the same, the same material that they print the circuit boards on, they make mm -hmm. plates with, and that tends to be my favorite at the moment. But I also like Harmonious. polycarbonate too. Have there been supply chain problems with keyboards? Massive. There's a lot of legacy nodes going Massive. on. Massive. Like I'm, um, there is issues in every single part of it. There's plastic shortages for the keycaps, and then there's PCB shortages for the keyboards. Like I have um, keycap group buys that are that I've been waiting on now for maybe like a year and a half. Some of them. Yeah. Like I realized, oh, you know, I. My word, I've just realized there was one set that I bought in like April 2020 and it hasn't come yet. And it, it will probably get to two years by the time that it arrives with me. So, and these things were supposed to last like six months, you know, six months wait. So there's been a lot of like backlash in the keyboard community about this because basically the, 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 the places where there are the most delays uh, with the German company GMK, who make what are considered to be, and in my opinion, the best keycaps. They sound the, the nicest, they feel the nicest, and people tend to gravitate towards them like designers, so you get the coolest designs too. They're the company that's been hit hardest. Um, they always had longer production anyway, and they are their production line, you know, times are, it's like two years now. But so now a lot of keyboard vendors are using different materials and stuff like that. So like this is PBT, which is a different type of plastic and the lead times tend to be shorter. And plus there's a lot of a new trend in like, not pre-orders, like just more in stock products. So that's, that's how like really like the vendors, the keyboard vendors are able, they've had such a great couple of years financially that I think a lot of the smartest ones are turning their profit into new stock, new products. Right. And they're buying up, I, you know, because the entire industry has been built on pre-orders. Right, because, I was gonna say, it's ironic that um, all these supply chain issues that come from everybody switching to a just-in-time approach yeah. um, are leading to keyboard vendors that used to do all this pre-order kind of stuff instead switching to um, having stuff in stock. But it makes sense. The reason they were all doing the pre-orders is because every, there wasn't a large enough audience and everyone was scared that they were gonna lose their shirt, right? Right, but it's it's growing now, right? Yeah. To the now, point where people have grown. some of the resources. Because obviously you're gonna make more money if you've got stuff in stock. Yeah. And because some people are, are going to miss the pre-order and they're gonna wanna buy it and they can't buy yeah. it and they walk away and give their money to somebody else. So you would you would like to take their money, right? But you've got to have spend the money on the stock to, and you don't want to get stuck. Like sometimes these drop, um, drop.com keycaps, which I bought a couple sets of. Um, like the, the set I'm using on my Vortex Race here, um, it's still for sale on drop. So they, they, they I read that they as that they, they overestimated amounts. demand for that keycap set. I think as well though, they actually like to just have some sets that are always in stock. 
Yeah, I, I, I get it. And I think that's probably true. Because, I mean, that's one of the advantages of drop is the drop has stuff in stock. Like, like this it, set they, was really popular. Really, really popular. And they yeah, did and a pre-order. They did a pre-order. And then they basically invested all of the profits of the pre-order into more stock. More which stock. is what a lot of the vendors, the what our smaller vendors now becoming bigger vendors are doing. But the problem with the in-stock stuff is nothing is staying in stock for long enough now. So new product comes, Good 10 problem. minutes, it's, it's sold out, right? So like, yeah. there's still a demand estimation thing, which, you know, is something I can sympathize with, uh, that people were trying, they're still trying to work it out because a lot of these companies, they are still small companies, you know, and they're just, they're trying to make it work out and they're in like this, well, at the moment, which just seems like an ever growing hobby. Which is cool. There it is, Jason. Oh, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. I like the blue. The blue was a good choice. Nice. I think. Christian, thank you for the prime sub. I guess I should take out my badge, shouldn't I? I don't need it. Yeah, you don't need it. Let me do, uh, and now we can go through how uh, you How do I it. will do this, yeah. The other, other Let me direction. put these away. And, oh yeah, my my uh, my keycap set is it's still available. It is Camillo, MTP, MT3 Camillo. Yep. And it's blue. So I wonder if it would be a good design match for this keyboard. We'll see. But I'm going to start with my awesome classic Mac. So on the Apple II, there was there were two Apple keys, the open Apple and closed Apple, and mm -hmm. they were used as modifiers. And the story with... Uh, the original Mac is the, the reason the command key exists with that symbol is that Steve Jobs looked at the Apple key that they put there and he's like, God, enough with the Apple already because it's like the Apple menu and all, all that. And he was like, just how many apples are we going to put on this thing? And so then Susan Kerr made her little spinny, uh, found a picture of what is it, like a symbol for campground. It's kind of a stylized flower, actually. It's like for a campground or a point of interest or something. I think it's from Copenhagen. Yeah, it's from. Well, it turns out it's in it's in a bunch of different Nordic countries. I saw it in Copenhagen and took a I picture of it. I saw it in Copenhagen it. too. It was fun. But they're they're in Norway and and Sweden as well, um, apparently. And so that's why the command key is what it is, but because they just assumed that they would go with the Apple. And still, in a lot of Apple keyboards, even now, it is the Apple key, and people think of it that way. But it, it, they made the command symbol instead. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, that was always the all the modifier keys on the Apple II were like Shift Open Apple Reset mm -hmm. or whatever. Like it was all the open Apple or the closed Apple, and one was on one side and one was on the other. I found out. Uh, I realized that uh, we're talking about learning how to type. Um, some of my quirky typing behavior is entirely based on keyboards that I used at some point. So like. I use the command key on the left side all the time because, and I realized it's because I, I started using a keyboard that didn't have a command key on the right side. All right, so just real quick, when yeah. you do this. I'm just filling time, okay. There's a little cable that connects here. You don't wanna have to deal with it. So what you wanna do is just try and very carefully. Flip it over. Yeah. Or mm. move it up. Mm. This comes out, no. Actually, you can take it off like this. So you okay. are gonna have to deal with this. Oh, well, it just popped out anyway, so. All right. Yeah, it's not It's not great. Um, trying to find a way to. So it's this little guy. And you have to yeah. like connect it by, push the blue inside here. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. And then sure. you just like clip it in. And then it's in. Okay. So we'll pop it out. And maybe when you receive yours, we could jump on a video call and I'll just help. 
Yeah, I was thinking maybe we do that. Yeah. We could do the opposite, right? We could just do a stream where we're putting it together and putting the keycaps on. Yeah, we could totally do that. It's too hot in here. The, the final chapter. Yeah, I was thinking we, we talked about doing this when we started doing Upgrade Plus. That was a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. Almost exactly. Was it January of last year that we no, started? No, it was May. We started okay, a week so before it... WWDC 2020. All right. All right, wow. So we've been doing it that long, really? Yeah, year, yeah. a year and a half? Yeah. Well, one of our... Okay, well, that this is going to be even more impressive than, I guess, this story, which is one of our first ideas for something we could do for Upgrade Plus was, was Upgrade Keyboard Club. Mm-hmm. It just took some time. We had some supply chain issues. Yeah, we had supply... It, genuinely, we did have supply chain issues. <laughs> we did. Because I, I just wasn't sure what I could get you that would just be easy to get. And then this was like, when this came out, it was like, oh, that's the one. Nightbot's got the weather for London. Clear, 40 Fahrenheit. It's funny to me that, that ex that's a command that exists. Or C. It's, uh, it's sunny and 57 Fahrenheit here. Did you look at your- In Mill Valley, uh, California. Weather station for that info? I looked at my menu bar. Yeah. Where, which is querying my, my weather station. I'm a person who has written extensively about menu bars and station. You've got the market corner on that. I guess so. Well, the problem, I mean, I did buy a weather station. I guess I need to write about that. I need to actually write about the fact that I bought a new weather station because I had been using the old weather station since 2004. The big, and I finally retired it. The big, the big like, Snell fans, they need to know. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Well, people ask me about weather stations. That's what like, I mean. What I generally say is that they should, uh, they should probably get the NetAtmo one because it looks nice and it's easy. But that I got the Davis Vantage View in part because the last Davis weather station I bought lasted for 17 years. Yeah. <laughs> It's a they professional unit, right? It's like a 17 years a piece of technology lasted. Amazing. So they get my money. It's a professional piece of equipment you've got going on over well, there. Well, the problem with the, the NetAtmo stuff is it's fun, but if you want to do, like, wind or if you want to do uh, precipitation, you have to add, like, extra units, and it's kind of like a system. Yeah. And if you want to just get started with something simple, it does it, and that's why I think for most people it's probably the right answer. Um, the Davis Vantage View is like a lower cost version of the one that I bought. Um, I cheaped out a little bit because I didn't really need the extra sensors, but it's a it's like a package. It's like this big plastic thing that you mount on a pole and uh, it does all of those things. So if you're going to do all those things anyway, it's actually not a bad deal. Um, but NetAdmo lets you start small and then add modules as you go, which is kind of... Right. I guess that's a whole other uh, Twitch stream weather station. Twitch stream. That's a whole niche. Yeah. <laughs> I would make a Netflix recommendation to people. Mm -hmm. Cheer season two is out and it's awesome. It's so good. Are you familiar with Cheer? No. It was a documentary series they made about. Um, it was the they, it was the 2019 season was the first season like of the show, of the best cheerleading group in the US it's a college in Texas oh yeah yeah I did hear about this Navarro State College and then in the first season it was like way better than you would imagine right like there's so much more going on it's kind of like the drive to survive for cheerleading right and okay. then they've made a second season which covers 2019 to 2021 because obviously the 2020 comp competition didn't happen because right. it's following them on to, they have one competition a year, this, the college kind of like cheer competition. And they've won, you know, so many of them. And their coach is like a legend in the sport now. And the second season is pretty amazing. And it has, I don't want to spoil it for people, but like there's some 
there's like a couple of episodes where it, it just goes in some places that you never would have expected. It's a really good show. I, I recommend it. That was something I actually thought could be a fun semi-recurring segment for Downstream. Just recommendations from the two of you. So I, I can reveal exclusively on Mike.Live wow. that what we're talking about is doing a membership version of the show and having that be the member segment. Oh my god, that's such a good idea. Wrap it up, ship it out. Perfect. Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get there. That's such a good we're, idea. We're working. We got we got the ask downstream in the Discord. Yeah. Um, we're. I we're, love we're that idea. Because it's but such yeah, a natural that... extension of the show, and like. And she's super into Julia's super into pop culture stuff. Julia um, is some the of, reason a is lot of which Julia is tied in with me to all of it. Yeah. Like Julia's yeah. watching. If there's something new and a good, Julia's watching it. Yeah. And, and I would like to know like, what are the two of you mm -hmm. into and. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'll get it for free, but I would pay for that. <laughs> yep. No, it's good. I haven't, I think the reason I heard about cheer, the reason I hadn't watched it is, so my daughter was a cheerleader in high school. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, that we, we all burned out on cheerleading. <laughs> so yeah. It was like, I don't know. Maybe someday. Maybe All right, someday. It's great. I recommend it. But I understand how that could be tricky if you've been through the ringer that is chilling. Mm -hmm. And it seems like a real ringer for people too. It's rough. This is my little vacuum cleaner here. This thing's great. Also from Amazon.com. I don't even oh. heard of it. Amazon.com. Little scrappy underdog e-commerce site. Man, I remember when it was. How old does that I make do too. me feel? I remember when I couldn't get Amazon, you know? Like, I remember when it was just in the US. Just you know? dot com, yeah. Did I ever tell you the story about my Kindle? The first Kindle I bought? So I bought the Kindle 2. That was the first yes. one that came to the UK. Uh-huh. And whenever I would download books, it would destroy the... that just obliterate the battery. Right? And I ended up looking it up and finding out. It was only available oh. outside of the US in the UK. We were their first trial market. Right. And they did it all on cellular? It was all on cellular, but roaming. <laughs> so they didn't have a partner. They didn't have a data partner. Yeah. So I was AT, it was technically, it was AT&T and they were just roaming to different networks, right? As you would do roaming. And for whatever reason, that just destroyed the battery because I guess it was like constantly looking for looking different cell towers or whatever. But like it would just, I had to keep cellular off because what it was also doing, I think when it wasn't downloading, was always looking for AT&T or whatever. And it just made me wonder right. how much money would, was it costing? Did they lose every time in order to get into the UK market? Yeah. Tony uh, Sky Day asks, "Do I have a fancy cable too um, for this keyboard?" There is. It does. It comes with a fancy there cable. Is a that, cable. That was that story that I read. Is that they did a their their new version of this keyboard has the knob but doesn't have the fancy cable. I would say they cheaped the, out. The, no, I'm gonna say the cable that they are including is better because it's just a straight cable. Their curly cable is not good. Oh, goodbye, camera. Oh, farewell. Is that, that the overheating one. thing? I turned that off, so I don't know what it's getting so upset about. So it overheats in 4K mode, is that right? Yeah, but I turned off the ability for it to overheat. How do you do that? So I, I turn, basically the overheat protect, protection is, is not that the camera is struggling, it's that it might be too hot to hold. So it turns oh, it off. Wow. We but, should, you should, we, I think we have the same camera, right? So you should yeah, share that information. I will share that. Ian okay. might have it. Ian, help me. Um, well, I, I don't have one of those fancy cables, so I'm looking forward to trying out the fancy cable. I have lots of stray cables. So, so what I'll say is the cable is, is nice. It's kind of, I don't mean this in a bad way. The cable they include is like this to this, right? It's like, got some of the features that you would want, but it's not great. Interesting. So here's your cable. It's nice enough. At least it has the aviator, which I like. 
the coil right. isn't very good. That's that's the, that's uh. what I don't want. But I like it's cool that they they did these connectors because that's just fun. And they also include this, which is hilarious to me. Oh, uh, can a USB A to USB C? That's I don't fun. know if USB C to USB C will work. I think that's why they've included it. A lot of it. So all of these cables that I oh. own, they are USB A on the PC side, because. Yeah. And you know this, right? All of the different types of USB-C cable. Right. That's the issue. So you try it like this, of course, if you want to. But I think it might not always work. It's, it can be pretty picky. So that's why they include I have that. a... My keyboard goes through... A, I have a, a cheap-ish USB-A hub Velcro to the bottom of my desk. And yep. that's where my keyboard cable goes. I have a, an actual keyboard Velcro to the bottom of my desk. I, I I look forward to the day when I can do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Touch ID. Yeah. Button plus keyboard. This is reboxing. Look at this. Coming to me. It's coming to me. I wonder how Steven's liking his. He told me the other day he wants another one, so he's liking oh. it a lot. That's what it means. He's liking it so much he now wants another another keyboard. You don't talk you don't talk about that as much as you uh, as I thought you would on the uh, Mike and Friends podcast. Yeah. I don't really know why. I just I try not to talk about the keyboards too much because I feel like I'm just gonna bore everybody, you know. I just like shut up about it. the keyboards, Mike. We get it. This is your special space. Yeah. So this is the aluminium um, plate that it comes with. Right. I put that in the box that the polycarbonate plate came with. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's also just, for some reason it's been staying closed, but I haven't opened this. One. Big Bezel Bob is asking about the 2048 keycaps. I have mine here. This is your brass Waiting. Plate. Nice. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Then you put it inside and just have to know that there's a pretty thing inside. Sometimes you Whereas can see. I know that the screams of teddy bears are inside no, that so keyboard. Sometimes you can see. You can see through the gaps in the keyboard. Okay. So here's this huge little heavy hint. package. Little hint. This need, we need to find a box for it. It'll be packaged up and sent out to you. Amazing. I'm looking forward to it. it. We've also we've got packing materials, so you know. <laughs> That's true. You've got a, a lot of polyfill you can put got in a there. A lot of polyfill. Got a lot of uh, these cushion foam sheets. Yep. Hang on a second. It's great for all your here. packing needs. Oh, Ian sent me how to. Yeah, like turn I've, off I've the made use of second. some of the packing materials. The, the polyfill sheets came with all of these, so now handle with care. Thank you. That's very helpful. I appreciate it. So that's it. my studio. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm going to put this in the box. This was the foam that I took out. This is what the keyboard comes with. These two sheets of foam. Oh, okay. They sat right. in the bottom tray. I'm going to make sure you have those in case you ever decide to remove the... Polyfill. Oh, so Brooks Manzella said, I can't believe Mike hasn't gone the way of all other tech creators and got some kind of fancy nice that, knife that is exclusively to open boxes. Not only do I have one, I have one on the way, but the one I have, I don't like. I got this one from Grove Made. I thought it just looked really nice, but it doesn't really do a good job of opening boxes. 
I have bought a knife that's coming. Oh. I have a big old box cutter in I my... Uh, like Steve and I have a, a workbench out here mm -hmm. full of tools. And um, I, got a, I got a box cutter in. So this is what I got. I got a, a knife from a company called James Brand, which I have a knife of theirs already that I really like. And Aaron Draplin, the co-creator of Field Notes, did a collaboration with them, and I bought one of the ones that he was selling. But to be clear, James Brand is not James the Band. No, it's not James Band, it's, ja it's James Brand. I wonder if James Brand liked James Band. Hmm. James, what do they make? Sit Down, is that the song? Is that what they did? Sit down next to me, whatever it's called. Is that James? What is their famous song, James? The band. Uh, isn't it nude? Okay, let me go to Something like that? What is it called? James. James band. band. James. Laid. Laid is their is their big song, at least the one that I know. Right. Laid, okay. I it. think she is a star. Yeah, that could be. And sit down. I was right. They did do sit down. Oh, sit but, down. Oh, yeah. Sit there's a guy down. who was a, a newsletter I get who is a huge James fan, and he's going to England to see James. Were they one of the Which bands is, that reformed? They must have been one of the committed, bands that reformed. Committed. Yeah, 2007, they re reunited. Basically, every Britpop band reunited in the late 2000s. Of course, because they their their animosity toward one another was overridden by the opportunity to make money. Money, it's, loads of happened. money. <laughs> I mean, that's that's everybody. Every generation goes through that, right? Yep. Where there's the band that you loved when you were a teenager and they get back together when you're 40 and it's because they're all in their 60s and they want money mm -hmm. and they and and the money that they're going to get is going to override any dislike they have for each other yep. at least for a while and so like i saw the police at the Oakland Coliseum like 15 years ago and it was like i can't believe the police are touring well they they got a lot of money and they hate each other but who cares cuz they got a lot of money yeah. and Fleetwood Mac did that recently and then, and then the middle Abba. of it, Lindsay, Lindsay Buckingham quit because even the money was not enough. <laughs> That's hilarious. But the hate, you got to balance. It's a, tr it's a tricky balance if you're a rock star. The the cash grab versus the animosity toward your bandmates. So that, honestly, that is kind of funny, right? Because there are two bands that you would think would never get back together again. One is Abba, and one is Fleetwood Mac. And they both right. did it. And it is funny yep. to me that Fleetwood Mac were like, no, we were right the first time. <laughs> we yeah. we so, are well, a toxic you know, group for each other. This is a Jason uh, connection. Uh, you know, what they did after Lindsey Buckingham quit the band yet again is they got Neil Finn from Crowded House and he did their worldwide tour. He was he basically replaced Lindsey Buckingham. Because Lindsey Buckingham is a guy, right? Lindsey is a guy, yeah. Yeah, I always get that mixed up. Lindsay in the UK and, is sometimes a guy's name. Right. And so they they hired Neil Finn and he went and toured and with And remind him me, years. Neil Finn was the replacement singer in Crowded House, right? No, he was the replacement singer in Split Ends for his brother. That's it. His brother that it's a it's a funny story like his brother is out there with his band having hit songs at least in the UK and Australia and New Zealand. They never really broke it big in the US. Yeah. And then at some point they had a guy in the band quit and they were desperate to replace this guy with somebody and they called they basically said hey tim why don't we just get your kid brother in here and so they flew over neil who was just like i don't know 20 18 mm -hmm. 16 he was he was real young and uh and yeah he started writing songs that became the hits and it became very apparent to them that he was the more talented brother tim's fine he's fine so anyway, yeah, and then and then when they shut down the band, um, Neil Finn was like, "Do I really want to keep my brother's band alive, or do I want to make my own band?" And so that was that's the origin of Crowded House. Is that Neil Finn wanted his own band and not to just kind of keep driving his brother's car that all his brother and his friends had abandoned, <laughs> which I totally get. Crowded House totally is such a great name for a band. Yeah, and it was literally they were recording their album in L.A. and they were in like a two-bedroom apartment or or something with like five or six people in it yeah and that's why it was called crowded house oh, that's they fun. needed a name because their name was the Molanes at that point and that was a terrible name so they needed to was that the actual name I'm, I'm all no. over it hmm? why Molanes? 
It's uh, his mother, Neil Finn's mother's maiden name and his middle name. Okay. So it was like a placeholder. Basically, they knew it was a, a terrible name. This but is they, like they had to Mumford come up with and one. Sons. Yeah, Mumford and Sons. Good old Marcus Mumford. They had to kick one of the band out. Yes, I saw that. I saw that. People do such stupid things. Yep. Like just it, your life, your life will be easier if you just keep some of it to yourself, right? Yep. Like, you know, just like keep it to yourself, and then you don't have to make your life and everyone around you's life more complicated. Yeah, it's a, it's a different version of that same. Do I hate the people in this band more than I like the money that they're gonna pay me? Mm -hmm. But there is, you know. Hey, if you want if you want to be uncompromising, that's great. But some of these things, it's like really you you screwed this all up for that. Yeah. That was really. Yeah, in dumb. case you don't know, one of the band members was like reading a book about Antifa or something, and was like talking about it online. It's like this is a really interesting book. Like it, it was just like, why are you doing this? Yeah, I, I was I was perusing this right wing literature the mm -hmm. other day, and they're like, you know, keep it to yourself. Yeah, and it was like you know I like to read everything. It's like okay, oh, it was it you know. it was very much the uh, oh, see I, I'm going to make people angry somewhere by saying this, but it was very much the Joe Rogan kind of attitude, which is like I just got I I, I am open to all, all views, all man. sides, I'm all views. About, I like all these ideas. It makes me I'm a big thinker. Yeah, I'm an independent I'm, thinker. I'm a big brain. It was, it was and like those. my feeling he is, away. if you, I'm sure there are people in the world that do that, right? Go for it, but you do also have the the like presence of mind to not feel the requirement to talk about it. <laughs> I'm just asking the questions, man. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Because it's like yeah. there are reporters, right, who follow people in the right wing because they want to see what they're saying because it helps build sure. a wider picture or whatever. But it's not like they're then like, hey, man, everyone should follow this guy because, like, yeah. you got to open your mind. You know? <laughs> got to also be self-awareness. Yeah. That's, that's the phrase I was looking for. Mm. What, what, by the way, what is your opinion about uh, the, how much bigger the upgrade logo is in the stream than the connected logo? <laughs> Did you see this? Oh, the, yeah. mag, the mag trick is over there. Stuck. I to love the it. I mean, cabinet. you've got a you've got a glorious wood light up trophy somewhere. So the mag tricky is really just the home edition of of the of the mm -hmm. tricky. Have you ever seen the tricky? I've seen the um, AR version of the tricky Let that James Thompson it. sent me. Okay. Great logo, upright, champion, challenger. Yes, this is also how I can prove to connected listeners that I've actually completed the change. Oh yeah, look at that. London's not covered at all anymore. Nope. And then we have all these special plates at the back. Yeah. These are all, all the, of other... the different. Yeah, I love it. So good. It takes a while sometimes to uh, to get that figure it all to out. get that right. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say it's not a it's not like a cheap thing where you just move them around. I was like, well, no, that's the mag tricky. It's that. Yeah, the, that's the simpler, simplified, more affordable version of the of the tricky. No, it's really good. Thanks for bringing that out when we were talking about the upgrade banner. But that, that, yeah, oh no, I was super envious of that. It's so yeah, good. It's really and the good. idea of having like a trophy and we. Although our competition is not as ridiculous as the the japes on connected, it is a competition. So. I wanted something. As I've said to you before, and I'll say it again, the draft is what I want to win the most. So, you know. Oh, I had a thought of what the annual chairman's job could be, by the way. Oh. I think the annual chairman should be, yeah. um, on, for the Rickies, I, I think, thinking about last episode of Connected, I think the Rickies, um, the annual chairman should be in charge of the opening and closing ceremony. Oh, yeah, that's one, I, I feel think it, like. I think it's like yeah. a ceremonial position. Well, this is what I was saying, right? That I said Stephen didn't do his job. That was what I was referencing. Yeah, yeah it's the... It's Tony like is the, pointing um, something out. I had the wrong circle. We're about to have... Oh, yeah. We, we're about to have the Olympics. It's like the head of the IOC comes out and declares the Olympics open, right? Mm -hmm. That's the job of the annual. There you go. I've now got it right. It's, I had to have the two small circles. 
The large circle indicates... Oh, is, is for a twofer. Right. No, that's not right. No, that's not right. It is that's the, not right. The, the large, large circle, circle is, is for the annual, annual and the small, small circle, circle is... Is keynote. Event. Keynote. Because sure. that's not how it works for the mag tricky. The mag tricky, you get right. two silvers. The gold oh, is... is to indicate that there is one winner. Yeah. This is just as complicated as the Rickies are. It's like too too complicated. Yep. I reckon we're going to be drafting before the end of the quarter, you know. I think that's probably true. We March. also don't have, we, even though we have an annual sort of like, we keep score of who wins the year, The the it's an event-based pennant. Cool. But so, there isn't like a, yeah, I guess the pennant now is the, the thing, right? It would yeah. switch at every win. Yeah. There's always sure. there's always more to do there. There's always more. Okay, Jason, thank you. Thank you. And please. I now declare the stream completed. <laughs>